I've got another component out of the cheapo Chinese quad and scooter wiring loom, and it's the starter solenoid. Now, some people describe these as starter relays, some people describe them as starter solenoids, and some as a starter contactor. I can tell you, though, it does operate, this must be a universal one, which wouldn't really surprise me for that wiring loom. Uh, this one will operate at 6 volts at a current of approximately 1.7 amps, but when I apply 12 volts to it, it goes in very decisively. Good solid click. And it draws 3 amps at 12 volts. That's quite high power. That's a 36 volt amp coil that it's, it's got there, or 36 watts if you want to just regard it as a resistive type load. Although it's not, it's inductive. But in this case it's DC, so it is resistive. I've changed the subject. I've just wandered off tangent already. It doesn't really matter. It's quite a neat construction. The cylindrical construction does hint that it does actually contain a solenoid. So I would expect in here a couple of contacts being rammed together by a pin. But there's one way to find out, and that is to open it. So I shall turn my power supply off. I'll try and remember that set to high current. I shall zoom down for our betterment. And I shall try and not stab myself while removing these crimps. Oh, that is suddenly feeling a bit warmer, even with that short use. These little things, uh, MD who's ever really taken stuff like this a bit apart before, will know that these little things are really bad for uh, encouraging you to stab your hand. It's very easy for the screwdriver to slip and go into flesh. I'll try not to do that now, that would be a bit disconcerting. But having said that, I'm not going to guarantee it either because it's exactly taking stuff like this apart that has done that in the past. On more than one occasion, and being being a bear, I never learn. Uh, Okie okay, dokie. Okay. This is looking quite promising. I'm suddenly realising that's going into that latch there. That is not terribly helpful. I shall try my best here, but if it comes to it, I may delay. I'm just going to get my hand out of the way here. Gloves would have been helpful. You know, I'm saying that now. I will slip and stab myself. Right, tell you what, I'm going to have to get an arrower blade here. I might even also put a glove on because this is just foreboding. It's just it's just heading in the direction of stabment. So uh, I'll, I'll do that. I'll be back in a moment. One moment, please. And back again. That was as hard as I was expecting. It always is quite tricky with those things. Let's see if we can get it out now. What is hanging this up? What is stopping this from coming out? Oh, I do see a solenoid. It is a solenoid. So it's got the spring that normally keeps my part. I wasn't kind of expecting that. It's just basically got a copper stud, right? Tell you what, let's zoom up in this. So what we've got here is we've got a copper stud that is normally held apart by the solenoid. The solenoid actually come in and just releases that, so it probably wouldn't take that much current to make that solenoid go in. That, uh, I guess, ultimately it's designed for the... I thought it was going to slam those contacts together. I thought it was actually going to press, but it's doing the complete opposite. Um, I guess that just means it is compatible with uh, 6 volt and 12 volt systems because I could hear it clicking in solidly with uh, 6 volt much louder at 12 volt. What about these? Can I, If I was to undo these bits here, would the contacts come out? So let's take these off. Just in case uh, you perhaps have a vehicle issue and want to try and fix it at the side of the road, is it possible? Uh, actually, all you'd do is you'd get a screwdriver and just bang it across these terminals. May have done that in the past to get Ralphie out of a tight spot when he was having technical problems. These do come out. So we've got a, a rivet here that then holds the contacts in, and it's just bare copper contacts. I say bare copper, I feel that given where this came from, given the cost, I feel I should hold a magnet next to these. Magnet? Uh, they're not... Oh. The bolts are copper-plated uh, steel by the look of it, but the uh, contacts themselves are copper-ish material, non-ferrous, I'll, I'll say. I'll get this glove off now. I don't think it's needed. I'll just chuck that over there. Uh, what about the other contact? Let's get the whole thing apart. That's what we want. I want to get into all the details here. Maybe even check out the coil itself. So here is the other steel screw, copper-plated steel. 
And there is the other contact with a, a spring behind it and a little dome. It's really manufactured down to the simplest possible arrangement. I guess the reason that they've got those two outer sort of wings in it is just to allow, allow a sort of self-leveling sort of effect, I guess, in the contact area. I'm not really sure. It's very simple, I guess, that you know, after a while with a lot of starts, you may end up with pitting in that. And that's when you have to basically go up to the unit and because your car's not starting and tap it with a, a pair of pliers and suddenly it works again. I wonder if that's what's using the cars as well. This looks like an aluminum disc at the back, presumably. Oh no, it's steel. Uh, take that back, it is a steel plate. That was at the back, presumably to absorb the impact of that solenoid going in core. And why does this have... Why does this have a little cap in it? Uh, this needs further exploration. Maybe I was a bit premature to... I think it's filled with resin. I think we'll have to explore this. I wonder if it's hollow. But they've added something else into it in there. Uh, like lead? Don't know. I shall, I shall take that out and we'll explore it. Anything else to explore here? I shall cut the wires going to the little coil. Little bobbin, which also has a steel plate at this end as well. Quite a lot of complex construction. And I shall undo some of the tape. It's not a super big coil because it is fairly low voltage DC. So what you're getting here is a little coil of magnet wire as well. The enameled copper wire. I say copper. Oh, I feel the need to get the magnet out again. Mm, yeah, it, it, it's, it's copper. That's good. Right, tell you what, one moment, I feel that we have to explore this. I, I'm going to get, get it into here. I'm going to get the drill up. This is this uh, don't pause clap while you're doing this. We want to see it all. Is this going to contain something horrible? Is it going to be full of asbestos? Oh. What is in here? Is this just filled with solid resin? That feels like sort of fiberglass circuit board material. More fiberglass circuit board material. And then underneath, it's just more steel. Why is that then? Why did it have just a bit of fiberglass at the back filling that uh, round cavity there? Oh, I know why. I know why. That's an insulator. Because that's what was effectively uh, pushing against this. And of course, well, you don't really want it uh, somehow ending up bridging to the, the case. Which would effectively uh, just short it out because it's a positive supply gets switched through that. So that, that little fiberglass disc there was just an insulator. Well, there you go. That's quite interesting. There's actually more to it than I was expecting in a way. And it's, uh, it operates slightly differently from what I was expecting as well. But there we have it. That's what's inside a little starter solenoid.